We've all heard of the Quabbin Reservoir and four towns being wiped off the map to make way for Boston's drinking water. But now you can see it through pictures from local photographer Les Campbell. Executive producer Dave Frazier shares his story with you now. One of the elements of photography is, is, is the, the moment. There's lots of days when everything is dull and uninteresting. Then there are days when the mood is just there and it's exciting, the lighting is good. And those are the days you reach for your camera. My first hobby really was bird watching. And it's very soon wanted to photograph birds. And you just don't photograph birds with a snapshot camera. So. So you really have to get serious about photography, and so I did. This tree makes a beautiful frame with those rocks in the foreground. When I take pictures, they go into it intensely, and I, it takes time. I just don't just lift my camera and shoot. I gotta work a scene till I find the right angle, and it, it takes time. The thing about great pictures, I say TLC. Uh, time, of course, the, you've got to, when it, a landscape has expression as a person does, and you capture the right expression. And so that's a moment in time. And then it's lighting. Lighting is everything that consists of the quality of the light, whether it's atmospheric or whether it's sharp and hard. And all this sets mood and, and in particular gives character to a subject. and. And the third element is composition. You, you have to know how to put all these elements together so they all, they don't compete, they work together for a whole. And that takes time to, to get a sense of this dynamic balance that's required in, in good photographs. So. I began working in Quabbin right out of high school. I got a job over there for the summer, and they needed somebody in the lab to wash dishes. So I said, I'll do it. And I wound up getting a permanent position there and eventually became charge of the laboratory. The last 20 years, I was senior sanitary engineer. And so the minute they started the visitor center, I realized that we needed to have information. And I realized the history was vital to the information. So that's when I started uh, photographing with a different point of view, trying to see what was there, get comparison photos. I take pictures of anything that appeals to me aesthetically, and I hope people look at it, they, they feel a sense of beauty and, uh, and, and joy in looking at these images. Uh, I think it's, and it happens to be of a subject, the Quabbin Reservoir, which is very special. Quabbin is therapy for the spirit. I just want people to come here and enjoy them. They, they don't have to buy them, but just come and look, and if they get pleasure from them, that's, that's, a reward to me. Les Campbell considered himself a serious amateur photographer, and thus his approach to photography was as an avocation rather than as a vocation. He was devoted to promoting the excitement and joy of photography, and for more than 60 years, he shared his knowledge, enthusiasm, and appreciation for the art with others. Known for his photos of the Quabbin Reservoir, Campbell passed away last September at the age of 95, and producer Dave Frazier takes a look back on his life and the many people that he touched along the way. My first hobby really was bird watching, and it's very soon wanted to photograph birds, and you just don't photograph birds with a snapshot camera. So. So you really have to get serious about photography, and so I did. Les Campbell is considered by many to be Western Mass's most well-known photographer. Over the course of his 80-year career, he was an innovator, an entrepreneur, an inventor, lecturer, teacher, as well as a master of his craft. 
Of course, I wasn't born when his career started, but by 1958, he won an award from the Photographic Society of America as the top e exhibiting nature photographer in the world. He was somebody that was very quiet and unassuming. I learned that he lived right here on the Quabbin, and I was incredibly jealous because he had opportunities to get the light however he wanted it because he was here just about 24-7. As a teenager, Les worked in the water quality lab at the Quabbin Reservoir, and it was there that he developed an appreciation and love for the Quabbin region. The reservoir changed life forever for the Swift River Valley when it was built in the 1930s, and Les wanted to share that story with others through his photography. He spent 44 years working there. You know, he had the key to all the gates and the back roads and the key to the boat as he took water samples. So he got to see the beauty of it, and uh, he knew the story of it. He had relatives that lived in the valley. I mean, it was a traumatic thing. So he not, not only wanted to make sure people could enjoy the beauty and the solitude of the Quabbin, but he, he also wanted people to remember the sacrifice of the people that gave up their homes in the valley. Les traveled often to share his work. He pioneered multi-image slideshows with music and shared them on a wide screen. I was his unwilling roadie at the time. I was tucked into the back seat of the uh, Chevy Caprice station wagon, I think. Some nights we had 12 projectors to set up in a 48-foot screen, audio gear, a lot of cables. When Les retired from his work at the Quabbin, he purchased a parcel of land across from the reservoir's main gate, built a studio so he could show his work, and called his home Sky Meadow. This was his home since uh, about 91. He always adored this place. And he, he loves to have people see it, camera clubs, astronomy clubs. He, everyone's welcome. And uh, of course, he's got the beautiful gallery here now, too. Les's love for the Quabbin throughout his life motivated him to establish a visitor center and a support organization called the Friends of Quabbin. Les and his second wife, Terry, filled that visitor center with photographs and information to help share the story of Quabbin with people who stopped in. People were mostly from Boston. They, that was their water, but they knew nothing about how that water was generated. And that's what Les wanted to educate them about. Currently, there is an effort being put forth to name the visitor center after Les and Terry. We just had to have something that would be forever, and we wanted to let people know who enter the visitor center and know, learn about the Quabbin and learn about what happened to the four towns that are gone forever. Um, that there was a man named Les Campbell and his wife Terry Campbell, and it was because of them that this visitor center is here. Over the years, Les's work has been in many major magazines, including National Geographic. He has received numerous awards and citations from prestigious organizations, governors, senators, and more. But his passion for the last 40 years, and what he may be remembered most for, is his love of teaching other people his skills. It seems like I got hundreds of cards or calls after he passed away, and they all used similar adjectives to describe him, like kind, gentle, compassionate, giving, generous, so helpful. So many people wrote how, oh, I didn't even know the man, and he said, come on up, I'll, I'll show you how to take that photo. You know, he just wanted people to get the enjoyment out of it that he did. The local photographic community lost a good friend when Les Campbell passed away last September. He will be remembered as a gentle soul who was compassionate, generous, and humble. Humble may be the reason he never wanted to be referred to as a professional photographer. He used to say, I'm just an amateur. I take pictures of anything that appeals to me aesthetically, and I hope people look at it, they, they feel a sense of beauty and, uh, and, and joy in looking at these images. It happens to be of a subject, the Quabbin Reservoir, which is very special. I just, want people to come here and enjoy them. They, they don't have to buy them, but just come and look, and if they get pleasure from them, that's, that's a reward to me.
lecture is worth a thousand words. What a few words from Mr. Campbell from his own mouth. <laughs> well, it is I don't disagree, Your Honor, and I appreciate very much that the friends taking the initiative to start establishing this because I felt at the beginning it was essential to protect the reservoirs to educate the people who come here and because understanding something you desire to protect it, not understanding your trash it. <laughs> So it's been important, but the one thing I, I guess I will say uh, in this long journey is being able to uh, delve into the history and understand the engineering more than I would have if I had established this facility. But I guess the important thing to say is I want you to all look around the world and eliminate all the <coughs> photographs. And what do you got? It's a sensor. So that was the first thing that I did when I established the business center. Other than picking the entire committee, uh, the first friends of Quabbin for support, because we started with volunteers, uh, was to, uh, and we, I picked a wide diversity of people poets to authors to photographers to painters and uh, engineers and sportsmen and for all on the original uh, friend of Quabbin uh, support so but the photography was the first thing I did as I I ran a photography class here and established the Quantum Photo Group, which was actually a continuation of the former uh, Bellstown Color Camera Club, which I founded in 1949. So I go back quite a ways. Um, anyway, uh, that's because I felt photography was vital uh, to the conveying the message. And as you see, if you don't have the pictures here, it goes pretty flat, and not, not everybody will take the time to read it, but they were tracking, and the pictures tell the story. And so we established that, and then later on established the Pioneer Valley Photographic Artist, uh, which is devoted to prints, and prints are the final art of photography. 